Vamos a ver una, vamos a ver aquí. ¿Eh? Uh, assalamu alaikum, good afternoon, gentlemen. How are you all? Walaikum assalam. Walaikum assalam, sir. I'm fine, and you, sir? Thank you so much. I'm good. I am good. Great. Okay, uh, guys, uh, today we are going to start our final element of this uh, IG1 or of uh, our paper one or book one. Uh, before we start our element four, we will be proceeding to revise our element three over here. Let me yeah so in element uh, three what did we discuss we discussed about how we are going to manage the risk how we are going to understand the people and the process what are these in this element first we started discussing about the health and safety culture we had a definition of health and safety culture then we have seen that the impact of health and safety culture on the performance that in case if we are having positive health and safety culture what would be our performance in case if we are having negative health and safety culture, what would be our performance? Then we identified some indicators of positive and negative health and safety culture that in case if we are having positive health and safety culture, what are the indicators, negative health and safety culture, what are the indicators? Or if these indicators are indicating us that our health and safety culture is positive or otherwise negative. Then we discuss that what are the what do we have uh, the influence what kind of influence we are having of uh, our peer or our colleagues on us and uh, how it plays an important role in identifying or in directing the health and safety culture. Then we move to our module uh, two that was uh, improving health and safety culture. How do we improve our health and safety culture? Where we have seen that five basic principles are there which are indicating or which are helping us in improving health and safety culture. What are those five basic principles or the factors? The first one was management commitment and leadership we, in which we discussed that it is not only about the commitment to be shown on notice boards, in the emails only, or just by verbal communication. Uh, just by signing the policies, it is all about the physical visibility of the leadership of our top management to be present physically on the job site and to show their proper and actual leadership in the field. And uh, in case if we are having it, we will be having positive health and safety culture. Then we move next to the uh, we, we move to the next. Uh, factor that was the competent worker in case if we are having competent persons who are trained and uh, having knowledge, skill, experience and ability to perform the job, then we will be having positive health and safety culture because these guys, they know that how to do the job safely. After that, we move to the communication where we discussed uh, three different ways of communicating our policies, procedures, handbook, procedural uh, manuals, safety briefings, seminars, training courses, meetings. We can communicate it in three different ways, uh, uh, verbal, written, and graphical. And we, uh, then we discuss that, what are the benefits and limitations of verbal, uh, written, and graphical communication? And how do we use uh, different methodologies to broadcast our communication 
okay for example notice board posters digital media toolbox talk memos email workers handbook then uh, there was an assignment that uh, it was a group discussion by the what are the merits and uh, demerits or limitation of using safety posters as a form of propaganda after that we move to our next topic uh, that was uh, cooperation and consultation that was one of the principle in improving health and safety culture that if we are cooperate if we are consulting with our workers and we are cooperated cooperating with our workers then it means that our health and safety culture is going to be moving if uh, in positive direction and it could be uh, these are the identification of positive health and safety culture or if we are going to improve it or not then after that we move to uh, in, in in the consultation process we have we knew that what kind of consultation we can make or what kind of consultation we can have like uh, we can have a uh, safety committee and the committee uh, what the committee is going to be di uh, discussed what are the issues that they have to consider in in their meeting and what are the factors which are making a committee an effective committee how the committee can consider themselves that yes we are an effective committee whatever we will be saying whatever the uh, improvements we will be making these improvements will be helping in improving the overall safety culture after that we move to the training side that was the fifth principle in improving health and safety culture where we discussed that what happened in case if the workers are not trained properly what they will do how they will be behaving in the field after that uh, we discussed that what are the modules what are the factors we need to consider in the, or we need to include in the module okay uh, we move to a module part that where we discuss that hazards and risks, rules and precautions emergency procedure who to contact with concern i mean these are the points which had been included in our or which we need to include in our modules modules of training for example if i am conducting the work at height uh, confined space entry training in case if i am conducting the rigging and lifting training excavation training uh, hot work training so all these points should be included in those trainings in those training modules after that uh, we learned what are the training opportunities we get once we are working on the project side different opportunities are there for example when the employees are newly hired if there is some kind of job process technology or legislation change then we can conduct the training to our participants and then we move to the induction training in case if someone joins us newly what kind of training do we have to conduct for him what kind of topics we need to include in the induction training and i remember that i had asked you one question i mean by calling different names of uh, you guys that now if i ask you to conduct the induction training can you do that some of the participants they said it confidently yes we can conduct the induction training now for all the new participants so guys these are here in module two we discussed of five main components of five main ingredients or principles of improving health and safety culture after that we move further and uh, here we discussed uh, what are the human factors which influence our safety related behavior and uh, there we discussed the three main factors the job the individual the organization that what how organization is affecting my behavior how my job is affecting my behavior what about my personal attitude competency skill and my motivation it behaves or it influences me in behaving positively or negatively and uh, there we discuss about the attitude the risk perception that how you interpret the information what are the factors which are basically uh, affecting your hazard identification or risk assessment so or you can say the per your perception about the risk so it was our module uh, 3 then we move to our module four where we discuss the risk assessment and in the risk assessment we discuss the basic definition of hazards and risk then we move to the risk profiling in the risk profiling we learned that 
in an organization we are having different kind of risks so different kind of activities are basically different different kind of risks so we have uh, made a register or we had given a profile value to all of our risks that what are the low risk values what are the high risk values what are the medium risk values and in this way we had given a profile to all of our risks and after that after the risk profiling we move to the risk assessment that what is the risk assessment what are what are the needs for the, the risk assessment or the purposes of the risk assessment then a suitable and sufficient risk assessment should be including what factors should be there and means uh, you have to prioritize you have to identify the controls properly and the suitable risk assessment should be in should be conducted in a way that no factors no points should be leaving behind and all the things for the whole activities should have been covered in the risk assessments then we move to the five steps of the risk assessment the five steps are very simple in the slides somehow we had gone through the complications but five steps were very simple those five steps are you have to identify the hazard then you have to identify who might be harmed and how then you have to evaluate the risk and you have to decide the control measures then you have to record significant findings once you write the control measures, then you record the significant findings or anything which is important and how you are going to implement this, these controls. After that, you review and update as time to time or whenever it is necessary to update our risk assessments. Guys, I am having an official call from my office. Give me a minute. Huh? I'll, be, I'll be back to you. Guys, please give me an excuse for one more minute. Huh? Did you face any connectivity issue? while you were joining with us no sir no, no sir no sir there, there is a message in the group and uh, i just had received a call from my office and they are asking uh, to send them the invitation link again so maybe there is some issue i, I was just asking you here no issue sir maybe in that okay. person's Maybe his internet submission. Perhaps. Uh, because uh, just now I receive an official call and they are asking me to send them the link for the training. So, I don't know. What if, perhaps. Okay, fine. Um, so over here, guys, uh, we'll be back. Over here, uh, we discussed about the risk assessment steps are very simple okay you have to identify the hazard whatever the technique you are going to use you are going to use your knowledge experience to identify the hazard you, you are going to use some kind of checklist to identify the hazard it is up to you okay uh, other than other than using your knowledge and uh, using the checklist we have seen some other uh, techniques. What are other techniques? For example, I also mentioned one technique, MEEPS, Material Equipment, Environment, People, and System. You can use that technique to identify the hazard as well. And uh, after that, uh, 
yeah you can have different sources of information from where you can have the information regarding the hazards and we also use the stridum technology uh, stridum technique to identify the hazard and after that we go to identify the people who might be harmed by the way i should be proceeding keeping all these five steps uh, i'll be proceeding okay and uh, over here then uh, here we identified the hazard using the internal external source different identification method over there stridum was one of them and then the second step of hazard uh, risk assessment was to identify the people who might be harmed and we need to identify how they are going to get harmed different uh, kind of people we we are having uh, one of the class is vulnerable group where we are having or we might be having young people new or expectant mothers disabled workers or lawn workers uh, after that we move to the third step where we had enough information about the hazard and the people who are going to get harmed and how here we when we say how we identify the likelihood and the severity okay what is that that is basically the main risk assessment and that is the backbone of the risk assessment and risk is basically likelihood into severity we had given uh, given some numerical values to likelihood and the severity and once we join them together we have one kind of matrix and that that is what we call a risk matrix or risk assessment matrix whatever you uh, the name you are choosing where we have seen uh, we have graphically representing the likelihood on x axis and y axis would be the severity and uh, multiplication of these numbers are giving us some kind of uh, num other numerical values or the products which are basically the values of the risk associated with those activities and uh, in case if we have to mitigate the risk in, in case if we have to control the risk so we are having possibilities or we are having different scenarios we can reduce the likelihood or we can minimize the severity in both ways we can reduce the risk sometimes we play with both means you minimize the severity as well as you uh, reduce the likelihood so in that way you can reduce the risk next uh, next we discuss that in case if we have to reduce the likelihood or the severity what is the methodology of course we have to control the hazard how do we control the hazard we will be controlling the hazard using the hierarchy of control starting from elimination substitution engineering control administrative control and ppe where we are using the elimination that we are totally eliminating the hazard no hazard no risk substitution is we are substituting it substituting the less hazardous material with the hazardous material i gave you the example of uh, i guess there was some kind of uh, we we took the example of generator another example of chemical is earlier time we were using acids to wash our uh, floors and toilets now we are using the harpix which is very less hazardous as compared to the acid right so we can use that and uh, after that uh, we will be uh, we will be moving to the engineering controls in the engineering controls we basically identify some kind of technical solutions to those problems like some kind of isolation separation partial enclosure or some kind of safety devices could have been used after that we move to administrative control where we are defining some kind of rules and regulations just to uh minimize the exposure of the people okay where we are playing with some kind of shift patterns or uh, we are isolating the people in different ways by putting some kind of sign boards Barric uh, barrication is by the way engineering control okay and after that information training instruction and supervision would be the final control which we will be providing and that is basically a very nice administrative control and can be implemented to all the hazards with whatever we are having in case if we are unable to control the hazard uh, using elimination substitution engineering or administrative control then finally we provide the ppe to our participants to our employer um, our employees or our workers that now because we cannot control the hazard so you must control yourself and in this way the guys are protecting themselves their body remember guys the ppe is the last line of defense and while using the ppe 
you have to perform the job with the actual hazard present on the job site. And this is what we discussed. And then we discussed some safety signs where we discussed that what kind of prohibition signs look like and warning mandatory safe condition and fire conditions of fire equipment signs are uh, different with each other, different from each other and how they look like, how we will be identifying, how we'll be segregating among these signs. Uh, we discussed the PPE, their merits and demerits. After that, uh, we discussed how we are going to select about uh, the risk because we are controlling the risk. We, we identify, we evaluated the risk in the numerical value because numerical value give us clear idea where we are and how we can control it by minimizing the severity or the uh, likelihood or possibility. Then we discuss different definition, residual risk, acceptable risk, tolerable risk, or unacceptable risk. We discuss them. Uh, and over here, we have ended up with this, with the risk assessment, basically. Here, we are going to record the significant finding and implementation that what are the significant findings, okay, once we were evaluating the risk, and then how we are going to get them implemented, whatever the control measures we have defined. Once we are done with that now, because at this time we have done everything, document is prepared, we are going to give it to all the workers so that they can get them implemented on the practically on the job site. Once they will be doing it, then we are we just have to keep them monitoring and we have to review in case if required. So these are the five steps of the risk assessment we had discussed. And after that, uh, regarding the special cases or uh, vulnerable workers like young persons, uh, expectant mothers, disabled workers, and uh, lawn workers, we discussed them that what can we do to control the hazards specifically to these workers. Then there was something with, with the name management of change. What is management of change in case if we are going to work on the existing premises, how we are going to control it? what kind of uh, hazards are appearing in front of us, how we are going to um, identify the risk assessment, uh, how we are going to prepare the risk assessment, how we are going to control the hazards. I mean, we will be going with the communication, cooperation, competence, segregation, emergency procedure, welfare provision. We will be, we will be identifying about all these hazards and their controls would be identified. Then we move to the safe system of work, which is basically a formal written document in which we are identifying the hazard in a systematic way. And then we are defining the safe methods to perform the job where we are including the people, equipment, uh, material and environment to completely describe everything in the safe system of work so that all the aspects of the job activity should have been covered and uh, all the hazards are properly identified and controlled then uh, in the in the um, in the safe system of work we again use the uh, technique of sridam okay and uh, where we defined different steps and I had given you one assignment regarding that. We took the example of changing a wheel uh, in case if you are going on the road and something happens, let's say you got a puncture tire and you have to change it now. How you are going to change it? You are going to divide the task into smaller step and then with each step you are going to identify the hazard and you are going to identify the control. And this was the one of the assignment I, I remember I had given you. After that, uh, we, uh, we, by the way, after our here, yes, uh, we identify the control. This is the same topic where information structure and supervision is given. And finally, monitoring the system. So over here, safe system of work is basically, once we talk about the safe system of work, it basically moves along with the stridum where we are selecting the task, recording the steps or the stages of the task. We are evaluating the risk associated with each step. We are developing the safe work method, implementing them and monitor them to check if these implemented controls are effective or not, or do we, or in case, if we have to implement some new controls or do we have to revise or review our whole system. 
next we move to our next module that was about the work permit system which is going to be implemented for all the construction activities and for the uh, for non routine job in the existing facilities or uh, in the general industry so over there we have seen that how work permit system is operated and its applications are there starting from the issuance up to the closure issuance receiving clearance of the area and then cancellation or the closure of the uh, work permit and up to its extension if required we have seen all these steps after that we move to the emergency procedure where we discussed that what are the emergencies different kind of emergencies what do we have to do in case of an emergency what are the possible emergency arrangements do we have to make and different communication methodologies we have to define about them and roles and responsibilities should have been defined then how we can uh, for all those guys whose roles and uh, sorry whose roles and uh, you can say duties have been defined how they are going to react in case of an emergency for that purpose we have to conduct the drills then we move to the first aid requirement that what are the requirement of the facilities equipment personnel and uh, how the first aid facilities and the equipment look like what should be included in the facility or the equipment where we discuss that we can have a checklist based on these wording you can make your own checklist and in that checklist you can include all these points and uh, then we discuss that what are the main aims of the first aid we discuss that these are three uh, three p's or triple p preserving the life preventing the deterioration and promoting the recovery after that we move to the first aid personnel what kind of first aid personnel do we have or we can have on our job site one we call them medics or physicians which are already there and then other than those we can have trained persons or trained personnel which we call them first aiders of the work and uh, then we uh, move uh, to identify that regarding the first aid coverage that uh, what are the cases in which we need to have the first aiders over there for example during the shift pattern during the area to area division or in case the uh, if we are having a huge size of organization or huge size of number of workers are Use then what we have to do then we need to include the first traders over there okay after that we move to the staff that how we are going to select the staff who should be a first trader what qualities do they have or they should be having in them in case if they are uh, first traders yes sakeb you are writing something so over here till here uh, we have discussed about the first aider uh, sorry module 3c you diverted me i was going smoothly okay so till now we had uh, what what we had discussed we we just had summarized the whole module or element 3 in which we had discussed starting starting from the safety culture up to the first aider so in case if we, if there is any question please ask me this was an important chapter so i wanted to describe the whole lesson in one go so that you should be having a clear idea about the whole lesson whatever we had discussed now we are going to discuss our module 4 before we are going to discuss module 4 i just wanted to get uh, an idea about uh, about the module 3 in case if or in case uh, from the element 3 if you are having any question yes shanawas please ask me the question you raised your hand shanawas Uh, i'm sorry i'm sorry to interrupt you i cannot listen you properly can you please write your question in the chat i will be reading and answering it okay sir thank you thank you i will just yeah. uh, there, there is an interruption in the voice so i was unable to hear you
any other participant if he wants to any other participant if you want to ask the question please ask me the question now from what you uh, sorry from element three element one two three whatever and then we will be proceeding to our element four i'm waiting for the question from shanwas who raised his hand zeng feng yes please hello teacher uh, i want to ask question is uh, for this uh, risk uh, risk uh, assessment uh, who had defined the likelihood and uh, the risk uh, sever severity uh, at the end who does who makes the decision uh, this uh, hazard is belong to which yes. which matrix right very nice very nice i see uh, for that purpose i should be opening I should be opening element three. Okay, uh, Shanwas, I will be reading your question later. Uh, first, there was a question from Mr. Zeng. Uh, Mr. Zeng said that First of all, regarding the risk matrix, okay, the question was regarding the risk matrix, who is the one who identifies that, who identifies about the likelihood and severity, okay, first. Then who is the one who makes the decision about the risk control, right? Zeng, please, please tell me if this is your question. This is what yes, I mean. Yes. Yes, yes. Right. Okay. See, guys, in the when we dis, when we were discussing the risk matrix, do you remember I told you that it is all about your organization who decides about it, about what? Who decides about likelihood or who decides about severity? Maybe you are one of them who is the uh, one who is preparing the safe system of work. So perhaps you are the one who is defining about the risk matrix. So in different organization, based on their risk profiling, if they are having high range of risks, okay, based on their risk profiling, what you are going to do, you are identifying your risk matrix and it depends that you are having, in case if you are having low risk of work, for example, banks, for example, normal, uh, you can say minor size of uh, hospitals or clinics, they can have three by three of risk matrix. Okay, if you are having organization uh, like oil and gas construction, maybe you would be having five by five of risk matrix. Then in case if you are working in the oil refinery or in gas plant, perhaps you might be having 10 by 10 of risk assessment in which likelihood can be divided into 10 more, uh, you can say there would be 10 more subdivisions. In the same way, severity would have been divided into 10 more subdivisions. So who decides about it? Question number one is who decides about it? What value do I have to give it? It basically defines your internal procedure. Question is who makes the internal procedure? your senior management maybe you are the part of that senior management who decides about it that we will be giving number three to possible let me let me we will be sorry we will be giving number three to possible okay we will be giving number two to unlikely we will be giving number one to extremely unlikely Okay, maybe you are the part of that that board of uh, board members or whatever you call them or the committee. So basically, whenever I would be having this risk explanation, okay, and this risk matrix, based on this, I can do the risk assessment. Remember, guys, everyone is having his own perception of risk. 
so if you do the risk assessment i cannot say that you did not do it correctly because it is all about your perception so who decides about it you can decide about it it doesn't mean that you are wrong never think that once you will be performing the risk assessment you are wrong why answer is here answer is here answer is here we discussed about it everyone is having his own risk perception <coughs> clear so it is all about your previous background your training but who decides about it once you are the risk assessor then you will be the one who will be deciding about these values okay and what kind of control measures you have to identify it is you who have to identify that you are going to eliminate it you are going to substitute it you are going to do some kind of engineering control administrative control what administrative control has to be uh, applied over there or what kind of pp you will be applying over there so this is you who have to decide clear mr zeng yes very clear thank you sir okay. welcome welcome now there was a question and the question was from mr shan was mr shan was said that uh, regarding the risk assessment as a safety professional are we going to prepare mos also what is mos sir it's a method statement method, statement. method of statement uh, no 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 yes. see method statement is basically method statement is basically done by your uh, construction department construction because they are the one who is going to do some job who is going to construct something okay so usually yes, method yes, statement would be given by them you are going to check the method statement yes you can have a key player uh, key role play over there in in the formation of method student because you know that if they will do step a before step b or after uh, sorry a they will do step b before step a then there would be some kind of safety issue that is why once the construction make once the construction prepare the or your engineering department prepares the method statement usually uh, safety department they have a review over there and they can put their comments over there but who prepares it okay. the person is who prepares it engineering department construction department or whoever or in some scenarios operation department if it is already constructed okay yes okay. we can review that based on the method statement we will be preparing our gsa okay clear now thank you thank you so much thank you thank you Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. Okay. Any other question, guys? If there is any other question, please let me know. It was very important chapter. That is why I am paying more attention to this chapter. And of course, there were some divergence. So that is why I was not feeling happy that I have gone through all the things again. So just to give you the connectivity, I moved again to element three. And now we are going to go for element four. Stop sharing and share again element four. In element four, what we are going to discuss, first we will discuss what are the main learning objectives. Then I will, I will be giving you a connectivity from element one to four and we will try to identify the PDCA cycle that if we have discussed the PDCA cycle through the throughout the four elements or no let us first have a review of element four or just uh, have a discussion about learning objectives of element four and once we will be discussing about the learning objective of element four then we will be going to identify where we are planning where we are implementing we are checking it and where we are going for the improvement let us have a discussion in element four what we are going to discuss we are going to discuss health and safety monitoring and measuring we are going to monitor it we are going to measure it what are the set targets where we are okay uh, are we 
on our set targets or there is a gap are we moving ahead of our set targets or i mean if we are leading or lagging where we are we will be discussing this in our chapter 4 or element 4 what are the learning objectives of our um, element 4 we will be discussing common methods and indicators used to monitor the effectiveness of management system till now whatever the management system we have made we have implemented throughout throughout element 3 basically if that management system is effectively implemented or not how we are going to monitor that for that purpose we would be using some kind of monitoring uh, terminologies like are we going to monitor it actively or we are going to monitor it reactively what is that we will be discussing and by the way here it one uh, point has been mentioned that discuss common methods and indicators what kind of indicators like accident rate staff turnover trainings okay by uh, the key performance indicators kpis we will be discussing about them again then explain why and how incidents should always be investigated recorded and reported which is basically the part of reactive monitoring uh, i would like to explain something about the active and reactive monitoring by the we will be discussing the in detail about this active monitoring is a kind of monitoring you are monitoring something before something is going to get happen and you take action for example you are doing some kind of inspection of the job site and you are identifying the hazard and you are mitigating you are eliminating the hazards this is what we call active monitoring you are training the people before something is going to get happen and based on the training you are creating the safe employees you are making them safe you are letting them behave safe and of course this is what what we are taking something we are doing something before accident is going to get happen so this is what we call active monitoring in the reactive monitoring what do we do basically in the reactive monitoring something has happened already for example an incident that could be near miss that could be accident damage only accident like damage of premises or injury accident would be there a person got the injury so whatever the incident happened we have to uh, react on that now we will be taking some kind of actions so that we don't want to get the incident happen again okay for that purpose we are investigating the incident we are recording them we are reporting them there are other uh, there are other factors which are affecting or which are the basically requirement of the incident investigation that why incidents needs to be invest investigated we are having other factors we will be discussing about them then explain what an audit is and why and how they are used to evaluate the management system we till now we were discussing about the inspections inspections about something about activity about some kind of uh, uh, equipment about some kind of plant okay what about the audit which is about the evaluation of the whole system whole system what kind of whole system quality management system safety management system environmental management system okay so we will be having an audit about we by the way we will be discussing the audit the three phases of audit and then it would be more clear for us till now the audit is about the whole system next is and we will be able to explain why and how regular reviews of health and safety performance and are needed we are going to review on regular basis regarding the health and safety performances and based on those reviews we are basically achieving some kind of values which are telling us what are our set targets where we are are we leading or lagging okay so this is what we are going to discuss in today's session guys before we proceed further and before we are going to discuss our module 1 i just wanted to share something with you and that is basically 
over here. These are the introductory slides. And over here, these are basically These are basically unit IG ones, unit IG ones elements. And if we talk about IG one, which is basically management of health and safety, means are we discussing some kind of management system? Yes or no? How? We will see. In element one, what did we discuss? We discuss why we should manage workplace health and safety. Okay, in element two, we discussed how health and safety management system works and what they look like. Do you remember in element one, we discussed the three main reasons, moral, legal, moral, social, and financial. Okay, in element two, we discussed about different systems of uh, management system, for example, ILO, for example, ISO. Then in element three, we focused on understanding people and process, we focused on managing the risk. Then in element four, we are going to discuss about the monitoring. So starting from planning, its implementation, okay, having a check or review about that, all the things would be covered over here. How? In element one, we discuss the moral, social, and financial reason for managing health and safety at workplace. We explain how health and safety is regulated, how it is going to be implemented, and the consequence of non-compliance. And if you don't implement it, you don't follow it, what are the consequences you would be facing? Then we will be summarizing. We had summarized, by the way, the main health and safety duties of different group of people at work. Who will do what? Okay, explain how contractors should be selected, monitored, and managed. What are the main factors of selecting the contractors? how we are going to monitor them, how we are going to manage them, what kind of documents do we need to ask to our contractors to provide us those documents before we are going to select them. Okay, do you remember yeah. all these things? Uh, previous previous uh, accident mm -hmm. history. Previous accident history, we also check, we also ask them to provide us. And right? so okay. far, uh, how many projects they have done? What was yeah, their right. first aid ratio? All the statistics and all what statistics kind of projects yeah. already completed? Yeah, we used to ask them. We and the, what are their policies? Policies, policies procedures, yeah, their risk assessment, their qualification, their accreditations. Yes, we used to ask them. So these are all the things we discussed in our element one. In element two, what did we discuss? We discussed about the health and safety management system. Do you remember where we started discussing from policy? First, we had an overview about different systems, ILO and ISO, ILO OSH 2001. And then we discussed ISO 45001. And based on that, we discussed about the policy in policy where we are setting the target in general statement of intent. Who will do what are our set targets? Who will do what? how he is going to do what means we were making some kind of arrangements, right? We were setting the policy responsibilities and arrangements. Then in element three, what did we discuss? We, we had a complete discussion right now regarding the element three. That's starting from the identifying of health and safety culture up to the first grade years. Means if we go through all these things, we started identifying health and safety culture where we identified that what are the factors which are influencing on me as a human, how my behavior will be getting changed. Then we discussed that, how do we do the risk assessment, how we prepare the safe system of work, how we implement the safe system of work, right? What kind of permit system we are using and what kind of emergency systems we will be using in case if it is required to be used on the job site. So, here in element in element one and two we basically discussed about the systems their structures and in element two we discussed about the policy we set our targets and who will be doing what how we are going to do what okay then in element three we made the whole system and we implemented that 
right in element 4 what we are going to do we are going to monitor that the whole system we are going to identify in element 1 and 2 we basically did the plan and do and do part was also coming in somehow basically in element 3 we did the do part in element 4 we will be having a check monitor okay we will be having a check over there we will be monitoring and then we will be identifying the gaps through the audit okay how did we do that let me now let me open some more slides for you guys to give you some idea and why i am going to why i am doing this i will be explaining you at the end ig1 in which module we had the structure of pdcl pdca I, uh, in element 1 element 2 element 2 sir element 2 mm -hmm. very nice very nice okay over here we discuss the pdca cycle right here we discuss the pdca plan do check and act plan what you are going to do do it check what you are doing if it is working or not working act if what you are doing could be improved yes or no and here we discuss policy organizing planning and implementation evaluation and action for improvement and audit tell me in which chapter we discuss the policy in which element in second in element 2 very nice in element 2 in the same element we discuss the policy what about organizing where we were organizing roles and responsibilities for health and safety and who will do what appointment of resources allocation sorry sir Three. in this one organizing roles and responsibilities for health and safety in same uh, element we have discussed very nice very nice in the same element in element 2 what about planning and implementation where we discuss where we had a detail arrangements to ma make and manage health and safety and where we perform the risk assessment and safe system of work or safe work procedure three in element 3 in element 4 what we are going to do we are going to evaluate our performance and we are going to perform the audit and we will be had, having from the audits basically we'll be checking what are the action required to improve ourselves right so guys remember in in our ig1 we had gone through all these steps we had completed our pdca cycle okay and today we will be studying evaluation through active and reactive monitoring through, through the accident in, uh, investigation and through auditing right we will be having all these three steps covered in our today's session clear guys yes sir yes sir okay, okay great so now let us move what is the time now 6:24 thank you mahar sir i just kept 30 minutes to discuss all these i was having in my mind i was having only 30 minutes and then we would be starting the active and reactive monitoring okay guys uh, by the way uh, till now what we have discussed whatever the overview we got regarding the whole book is that clear Yes sir. yes sir okay again just to remind you in element 3 we had discussed health and safety management system where we discussed the risk assessment and we discussed the safe work procedure or safe system of work okay so the, that was the backbone of the whole health and safety management system 
so let us have a break guys and after the break when we will be back we will be discussing active and reactive monitoring we will be discussing the accident investigation and then auditing so let's have a break it's now 625 on my watch we will be back at 650 650 yeah 655 okay let's have a break guys join at try to join at 650 thank you goodbye <laughs> 